Hi, good evening, guys. This is a recording of panel data regression analysis. The packages that we're going to use here are Tidyverse, Deplier, Stargazer, MagritR, Haven, Gplots, PLM, NITR, Cable, and a Cable X and X table. So this is a code that automatically installs the package if we don't have it yet and then requires it. But if you already have it, it will automatically require the package and load it. Okay, so you may run this. I have already run it, so I will not uh, do it. Okay, so the outline of this uh, lecture is we're going to look at panel data models. First of, first, of course, we're going to introduce a bit about panel data. And then we're going to look at the first estimator, which is the pooled ordinary least squares estimator or pooled OLS. Then we're going to take a look at some other ways to model the panel data, like between estimator, first difference estimator. And then we're going to look at another very important method, which is the fixed effects within estimator. Also, we're going to look at the uh, dummy variables regression or otherwise known as LSDD. Okay. Least squares, let me spell that out. Least squares, dummy variables, dummy variables regression, LSDD. And then lastly, we take a look at the random effects estimator. And then we compare which among the three, uh, when I say the three, you have pulled OLS, the fixed effects, and then the uh, uh, random effects model, which of the three models are our best, uh, is the best model to use. Okay, so uh, panel data, guys, uh, you know, this, this is a combination of cross-sectional data where you take a look at different units at a particular point in time, and then combine it with, uh, with those units taken at different points in time. So that's what constitutes a panel data over several periods. Uh, we say that the panel data is balanced if the, all the units or all the cross-sectional units are present in all the years. Otherwise, guys, if they're not present in all the years, then uh, we have what we call an imbalanced panel data. Okay, if it's a balanced panel data, the number of observations is N, which is the number of units multiplied by T, the number of years or the number of periods. Okay, so okay, I'm sorry, this is not running, but you have this equation Y I sub T is equal to beta one, uh, which is the constant plus beta two times X sub two I T, plus beta k times uh, x sub k it plus a certain error term. Okay, this is the general equation for a panel data. You have the i component, uh, which refers to the different cross-sectional units. The units can be countries, firms, individuals. Okay, it can be continents. Okay, and then the t here represents the time component. Uh, depending on what years were the data gathered. Okay, so what are the advantages? Some of the advantages of panel data is it allows for controlling individual heterogeneity. By individual heterogeneity, we mean that we can look at uh, individual characteristics of each unit or each country that might be different from other countries. So for example, if you're doing a study on ASEAN, there may be some attributes or characteristics in the Philippines that are different from those in Malaysia or from Singapore. With panel data regression, that can be accounted for. Unlike in uh, multiple linear regression using OLS, that is not accounted for. A panel data offer more informative data, more variability, less collinearity among the dependent variables and more degrees of freedom and more efficiency in estimation. Okay, so there are other 
important features of panel data, which uh, uh, which I think this is, I'm sorry, among the independent variables, collinearity among the independent variables. I'm sorry about that. Okay, there also, there's also reduction in biases uh, resulting from aggregation over firms or individuals. Uh, I shared with you a data, okay, I'm sharing with you a data uh, which is uh, uh, job train. So this is about a data uh, where a firm is given, uh, uh, let's say, a grant on job training. And uh, we'd like to see how the job training could affect the wastages, the scraps. Uh, produced by the company. So this is a practical example. So I already loaded this, uh, but let me just show you the, the data. Okay, so here you have the year. This is the firm code. Okay, this is the ID, the ID of the firm and number of employees, sales, average salary. There are many variables. And this is the variable of interest to us, the log of scrap. Okay, we're not going to use all the variables. We're just going to select some uh, because the objective here is to really appreciate what panel data regression is. Okay, so there are 30 total columns, which means that uh, there are 28 variables, one of which is your, uh, less the year and the firm code. So you have 28 variables, all in all, less a dependent variable, which is the log scrap that gives us with the 27 possible independent variables, but we'll uh, limit it just for the purposes of this discussion. Okay, so let's now, uh, if you notice the, the log scrap has many NAs. Okay, there are 471 observations okay, and there are many missing values. So we have to remove those missing values. And this is one thing good with R because you can easily uh, remove those missing values. So this is from the Magritte R. So let's create this object called JT, and it's from the job train. And then we'll, we're going to filter. To filter means to remove, remove rows from your data set. And then uh, this one is not is an A, okay? Not is an A. So which means that we're just going to filter, we're just going to choose those that are not NAs, okay? From the log, log scrap uh, variable. So if you run this, and we're given just the first six observations. Okay, JT, let's take a look at this. If you click this, you'll have this in view, JT. We can see now that our number of rows, our sample has been reduced to 162. And then the log scrub uh, variable are all now, uh, there are no missing values anymore. So, okay, name log scrub, not log scrub, not them. No? Okay. All right. Then, we're go going also to just limit the independent variables that we're going to use. So once again, we're going to say in JT, we're going to maintain the same thing. JT, and then from uh, the job train, uh, job train, I think this should be JT, I'm sorry. JT, okay, because job train has still missing values. Okay, so JT, we're going to still call it JT and then JT, and then we're going to use the deep flyer package. We're going to select the, the variables that we're going to use. So we're just going to use the, uh, this is the uh, firm code, the year, and then the variables that we're going to use are the log scrap, total Rs. Uh, D88 and D89 are dummy variables. So this has already been, this data has, has already, uh, transform the year into dummy variables, the 88 and the 89. If you recall, there are three years here, 87, 88, and 89. When you introduce dummy variables, it should be N minus one, N refers to the level. So we don't include 87, only 88 and 89. 
Okay, and then we have the grant, uh, grant for this year and the grant for last year. Okay, this is the grant of last year. We're going to see if uh, the grant of this year and the grant of the previous year, if there's any uh, affect the, uh, the scrap, the waste stage in the, in the production of the company. Okay, so let's run this. Let's run this first. Okay, and then we see now that JT, okay, JT has now been reduced to uh, only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight variables, including the firm code and the year. Okay, so that's easily done using the plier when we wrangle our data, when we remove uh, rows, when we limit or when we delete some columns or variables that we don't, we are not going to need. Okay, let's take a look at the dimension, P dimension, panel dimension. That's from your PLM package. Okay, so this is a pa balanced panel data. There are 54 units, okay, and three years all in all. That's why there are 162. So R was able to look at the different units and it's a balanced panel, which means every firm is represented in these three years, 1987, 1988, and 1989. Okay, all right, let's, let's just skip that. Okay, now let, let's check, check, take a look at the number of observations. Uh, here, using the JT object, we group by code. Okay, so this is how you group your data by a particular variable. This is grouping it by code. And then summarize, which means we count. We count how many, uh, how many instances do you have of each particular firm? The firm, F code here is the firm. Okay, if I run this, okay, so you can see here that this is a firm code 410523. There are three instances of that. So because there are three years, okay? So if you check everything here, let's take a look at the last. Okay, 419483, 419482, all of them have three. All of them have three years, okay? So that's why it's uh, uh, R told us that this is a balanced uh, panel data. Now let's check the number of years, okay? We're grouping it by year 1987, 1988, and 1989, which means that for 1987, there were 54 firms, 1988 and 1989 also. That's why these are a balanced. The 54 firms here are the same 54 firms in 1988 and in 1989. So very fast, no? very fast for us to determine if it's a bal balanced panel or unbalanced panel data. Okay, so let's uh, let's take a look at the structure of the data JT. Instead of using STRJT, there, this is another way to do that. JT and then, remember this, okay, the pipe operator, it means and then. JT, take JT object and then get the structure. So, okay, you can see here that the F code, the firm code is an integer. Those are the numbers. And then the years are integers, 1987, 88, 89. And log scrap also is a numeric variable. You have negative and then some are positive. <clears throat> Total hours of training. Okay, so this is uh, the time spent by the company in training their employees. Okay, it's also an integer. And then this one is a dummy variable, guys, D88. So for example, let's, let's flash that. I'm going here to JT. For example, D88, for the first observation for firm 410523, D88, 0, 0, right? That means this is 1987, this one. Because it's uh, 1988, 0, 1989, 0. And then when we go here, uh, this is one, D88. Okay, that's date 1988, that's one. And then we go here, zero, one. So all are, all are accounted for, all, all years are accounted for. And by way of recall, guys, I remember that when we introduce dummy variables, we introduce only N minus one dummy variables. Okay, so that, what, that was what I uh, done here. Okay, but of course you can also refrain from uh, introducing the dummy variables because if we convert the year into a factor, 
R will automatically uh, remove one and generate a regression model that uh, with a reference, which is 1987. Okay, and then we have the grant, which is a binary variable. Grant means it had the grant in that year and then grant uh, on the previous year. Okay, so zero and one here means that the company received the grant and one means uh, this year and one <clears throat> grant one <clears throat> means it received a grant last year. Okay, now uh, let's just take a look at the head. So this is another way to do it, guys. No? JT and then get the head, the first 10 observations. Okay, so we have here. Okay, so this is our data. This is our JT data. And lastly, we can actually print no, the uh, descriptive statistics using the stargazer function. So let me run this. Okay. So what you see here, guys, is you have the number of uh, firms, 162. Okay, year, 162. Of course, this doesn't mean anything. This, this is just a count of all, the, uh, all our observations. And then this is the mean. Okay? This has no meaning because it's uh, getting the average of the years. Also, I'm sorry, the code and also the year. Uh, that, that doesn't have any meaning. Now for this one, log of scrap, it just got the average of all the scraps, regardless of the firm, okay? Regardless of the firm and regardless of the year. So this does not take into consideration the firm and the year. It just gets the average of everything. Here also, it just gets the standard deviation of everything, ex uh, in exclusive of, uh, of the year and the firm. Okay, so everything here, guys, is all about uh, all about uh, descriptive statistics of the whole data set of 162. Okay, so uh, maybe it might, it might not be that useful to us. Okay, so now there's one good way to present your data. Uh, the the uh, uh, okay the NIT R. Uh, I think this is the cable. No? The cable function allows us to print your data. Okay, so here uh, we will create print your data in LaTeX format. Okay, here. Well, just, let me just show you. We're creating an object called table, and we're using the X table uh, function coming from the X table package. If I run this, okay. So let me see, uh, let me just print table. Okay, you notice that uh, this, is in, this is in LaTeX. If you take a look at this, this is in LaTeX format. Okay, you see this, begin table. Okay, so this is in LaTeX format, but we can convert that into uh, print out here in the inline. So let, let me run this both. I hope it runs. And this is good because this is what you're going to see in your output. Okay. So here, this LaTeX uh, code was converted into this one. So this is what you're going to see in your knitted, knitted file. Okay. So this is coming from the knitr package, in particular, the cable function. Okay. So this is... Uh, uh, this is done in conjunction with the X table function. Okay, so this is just a new, uh, new way to, uh, let's say, print a table, okay, uh, in LaTeX format or HTML table, but printing printing it in online also. Okay, let's plot, guys. The uh, let's plot our our panel data. Here we are going to use the gplots function. Uh, gplots package and the plot means. Okay, we're going to plot the dependent variable log of scrap and then based on the firm. Now we know that there are 54 firms. It, it will give us guys the uh, the average, the average of your plot means it will give us the average of your log scrap per firm. Okay, so we'll give it a title, heterogeneity across firms. 
and then data is equal to JT. So let's plot this. It will not look good so much if there are many units, but this looks good really if you have uh, only a few units because you can really see the difference. So you can see here the, uh, the means, the averages of their log scrap. Okay, so let's wait for it to load. Okay. So here you can see the different firms. These are the firms. And then this is the, uh, the log scrap. Okay. And you can see that, let me, okay. you can see that the, uh, uh, they have different means, okay. Different means. So, which uh, tells us that, okay, which tells us that there, there may be heterogeneity. Okay, when you say heterogeneity, they're different. There are differences. There are differences in their means. So, you can see that, uh, that their means are different. They're not uh, practically the same. Okay, and this might have a, a bearing on the model that you're going to use. Because if they were practically the same, perhaps the pooled OLS method would be the best method. Okay, but in order to ac account for this heterogeneity, their differences, then maybe, then maybe it's best to use either the fixed effects or the random effects. Okay, so that's the heterogeneity across firms. Then we can also look at the unobserved heterogeneity per year. So since there are only three years, uh, then it's easily. Uh, we can easily see the difference between 1987, 1988, and 1989. And we can see here that the uh, means, okay, that the means of the log scrap seem to be going down. So perhaps it's indicative that the training that's being given by the companies are working because the scrap, the waste materials, the wastage seem to be going down. So this is indicative that uh, the uh, training, okay, the total hours of training seem to be working uh, generally as far as all the firms are concerned. Okay, so we have taken a look at the heterogeneity in terms of firms and in terms of time. Those are the two components of your panel data. Okay, the cross-sectional uh, uh, units, heterogeneity across cross-sectional units and heterogeneity across time. <clears throat> All right, uh, before we move on guys, it's important for us to understand that there are different variations in your panel data. Okay, so let me fl first flash this okay, and let me explain to you the different variations in panel data. Okay, so here you have a very simple example. I stands for the firm. So you have one, 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 firm one, they can uh, observe that 2019, 2020, and 2021. You have firm two, and then you have firm three. Okay, so let's, uh, these are the measures of a particular variable. Okay, this can be your dependent, uh, but since it's X, it's, a, it's the independent. But of course, it can be also a measure of the independent variable. So we have 9, 10, 11, 20, 20, 20, 25, 30, 35. Okay, and we can get the individual mean. Okay, that's, it's denoted by X bar sub I. Notice guys that this is sub I, which means that uh, this is the mean of the individual, uh, individual cross-sectional unit. The I refers to the unit, the cross-sectional unit, and the T refers to the year. Okay, so X bar sub I means the average of each individual firm. So for example, 9, 10, 11, the average of that is 10. So it's can see it's 10, 10, 10 across the time, okay? Because we're getting the average of your variable. So the average will not change. For, for firm two, 2020, 20, 20, you get the average of that still 20. For firm three, 25, 30, 35, the average of that is 30. That's why you have this 30, 30, 30. Okay, and then you, you can, you, you get the overall mean, which means you get the mean of all, okay? So this is the variable, you get the total mean of that, okay? 
uh, 9 plus 10 plus 11 plus 20 plus 20 plus 20 plus 25 plus 30 plus 35 divide by 9, that gives you 20. So the overall mean for all firms, for all time periods is the same, 20. Okay. So you will need this, okay, the individual mean and the overall mean and the variable itself to compute for the overall deviation between deviation and within deviation. And we also have within deviation and then first differences. But these are the most important ones, these three. Okay, what's overall deviation? Okay, if you take a look at this xi sub t, which is this one, the individual measures taken across each firm and each time minus the x bar. Okay, so xi t minus x overall. Okay, so everything minus 20. So you'll get that overall deviation. Okay, so that means that if you're taking a look at the uh, whole, whole uh, data, okay, then that's the, uh, the deviation across all, across all firms, across all time periods. And then we have between deviation. Between deviation is the deviation uh, between, between companies, between firms, between cross-sectional units. So you have X bar sub I, Okay, so this is the average. Okay, this is the average of each firm. We subtract it from the overall mean. Okay, so you, you'll get also the same answer per firm because x bar sub i will be the same per x bar sub i will be the same per firm. And then you subtract it from the overall mean, which will be the same for all. That's what we call, uh, that's what we mean by between deviation. So you're taking a look at the difference between each firm. Here it's negative 10, here it's zero, here it's 10. So you're able to see what's the difference in the deviation between firm one, firm two, and firm three. And then we have the within deviation. Within deviation is deviation within in a particular company, in a particular firm. So you notice it's X sub I T, Okay, minus just the average per firm. Okay, so you're taking a look at deviations for a particular firm. So for firm one, it's one, negative one, zero, and one. You're taking a look at the deviation for this, for within the firm. Okay, it has nothing to do with outside the firm. It's within. Between is between cross-sectional units. Within is only for that specific cross-sectional unit. Okay, then there's within deviation modified, you can just add, it's the same within plus you just add the overall mean. And then first differences, you get the difference between your, your variable. So for example, nine, okay, you cannot have a first difference here because there's no previous value. So it will be 10 minus nine and then 11 minus nine. So that's for firm one, okay. So for first differences is on a per, uh, per firm basis, okay? Because take a look at this, per firm it's 2019, 2020, 2021. So these are the three time period periods. So you have 2020 minus 2019, 2021 minus 2020. You cannot subtract 2019 and 2021. Okay, so you're taking a look at it on a per firm basis. Okay, and then there will be some that do not have any first difference, okay? So going back to our going back to our model, <clears throat> uh, we will now compute for the uh, overall vari variation, okay, and then the between variation, and then within within variations, okay. So this is easily com computed in R. So first, let's take a look at the overall variation, okay. So we use the JT object, and then we select. Okay, so actually, uh, actually we don't need this, this anymore because JT already consists of local scrap, total Rs, D8 to 8, D8 to 9 grand. Okay, so this was redundant. So maybe this can be removed. So just remove this because take note, JT is already selected. JT is already, uh, okay, uh, I'm sorry. You still need that because we need to remove the, the F code and the year. Okay, we don't, we don't compute the 
F code and the year for the uh, variations. Yeah, that, yeah, this is correct. We have two computes for this. And then we mutate all, okay? When you mutate, uh, mutate means you're computing, okay? You're computing. So we're defining a function called X, okay? Where X is uh, X minus the mean of X. Okay, remember, let me sh show this again to you. What's the uh, overall deviation? It's it's your individual x i sub t minus the overall mean. Okay, so if you take a look at this function, so x minus mean of x, and then we have to uh, we have to include this. We should remove all the uh, uh, n a that remove is equal to true, which means all the n a's have to be removed and then convert it into a data frame and then convert it into a report, a text report, and then just remove the all, omit the summary stat is equal to mean, and then two, two digits. Okay, so if you run this, okay, so it's now in a stargazer format. So you can see that the uh, standard deviation, okay, this is the standard deviation uh, this is the minimum, this is the maximum for your overall observations, which means that for your log scrap, you, you take a look at the individual measures and then you subtract it from the, you subtract it from the overall average, okay? And then you get the standard deviation of that, you have 1.49. Okay, you also have the, for the other variables, total RC is 28.02. And then you also get the minimum, and the maximum. So that's for the overall overall uh, variations. Okay, and aside from that, we can get the, we can also get the between variations. So what's between variations? So let's just go back here. Between variation or between deviation is computed by getting the average, okay? Average of each firm, okay? and then subtracting by the average of the total. Okay, so you do this by firm and then subtract from the overall mean. That's why you expect that each firm will have the same, will have the same uh, between deviation. And then what you do with this one is to get the standard deviation of all of this. Okay, just like what we did with the overall deviation. Okay, so uh, let's see now. First, what you do here, you notice that, okay, so let me just show the formula here. So it's X bar sub I, okay, minus X bar, right? This is the formula for the between variations. So what we do first is to we, okay, group by F code. So we group, we group uh, the, uh, we group the firms, okay, and then we select, L scrap, we, we select the variables. We don't select the F code and the year. And then we summarize all, okay, we get the mean. So the mean that we're getting is the mean per firm because we have grouped the firms. So you have firm one, firm two, firm three, firm four, etc. And then what we did was to summarize all by getting the mean. So you get the average of firm one, the average of firm two, the average of firm three, and then we come, we convert it into a data, data frame. And then what do we do? We select negative F code. What does this mean? What does this mean? Okay, we remove, we, uh, uh, we, remove, we remove the firm, okay? And then, uh, and then we, uh, we get the, uh, uh, we get the, we print it into a, into a table, okay? So let's run this. Okay, so we now have the uh, within, uh, between variation. Okay, so this is the, uh, have the standard deviation, okay? The deviation per firm, okay? The standard deviation per, Firm, firm one, firm two, firm three, their standard deviations uh, between the firms. 
for log scrap. For total hours, it's 28.02, etc. Oops, sorry. What was I discussing? Okay. Apologies, guys. No? I was looking at here. Should be here. No? Should be here. So uh, we have the average of the log scrap per firm. Okay. All right. Why don't we uh, just try it? Okay. So for firm one, for example, this one. Control C. I'm getting the log scrap. Oops. Uh, this one. Get the mean of that. I get it. 2.813. Okay. Mm. Ah, no. Uh, and then we have to subtract that by the overall mean. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. The, this is the average for firm one. And then remember, guys, for for between, we have to subtract that from, from the uh, from the overall mean. So you have to subtract this from the overall mean of log scrap. Okay, that's why, we, uh, but this is the average of, uh, of uh, theorem number one. Okay, now what's important here uh, is that we will compare th this with within variations. So let me run this. Okay, this is the formula for within variations. Okay. So you can see, guys, that the all L log scrap is, let me compare this. Log scrap is 0.45. This one is 1.43. The uh, For total hours, the standard deviation is 18.61. This one is 21.25. So what does that indicate? It indicates, guys, that the variation is more uh, between firms, <clears throat> okay? Remember, this is between, between variations, okay? This is within variation. The standard deviation of log scrap here is 0.45. The standard deviation here is 1.43. It means that the uh, variation is greater between, uh, between firms. <clears throat> if you're comparing firm one and firm two, the, uh, the difference of variation between them is greater in comparison with just getting the the uh, standard deviation uh, within a firm, so that's what that means. Okay, so this one twenty one point twenty five. This is eighteen point sixty one. So the uh, variation is really bigger when you're comparing it between between firms as compared to within a particular firm. Okay, so that's what that shows. Okay, so for the methods, guys, of uh, panel data regression, the, the first method is the most simple one. It's called the pooled OLS. Okay, so there are different types of pooled. There can be the between also and the first difference estimator. Now, a pooled model has a specific specification which does not allow for the intercept or slope uh, differences among indiv individuals. So, walang differences sa mga individuals. Okay, walang well, differences sa time. Okay, no time differences, no individual differences. In other words, guys, disregard the uh, firms, disregard the uh, different units, disregard the time, and treat it as one homogeneous data and create an OLS out of that. So that's what we mean by pooled OLS. 
So this is the one that 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 is similar to our multiple linear regression in the sense that it it uh, in other words it inviolates or it uh, it disregards it's the right term disregards the the uh, any information that might be derived out of the heterogeneity of the individual units or the cross sectional units and the heterogeneity of uh, time okay so that's what pooled OLS means. So if you take a look at this equation, it's just the regular, regular uh, ordinary least squares, beta null plus beta one times x one, etc. So this is your equation for a regular ordinary least squares. Okay. Note that the coefficients beta null, beta one, beta two, up to beta k, are the same for all units. Okay. They do not have, they do not have I or T subscript. Take a look at this: beta null, beta one, beta two. So you cannot see here a beta one I, which means there's no beta one different beta one for firm one, for firm two, for firm three. Okay. So walang T yung mga parameters, no beta one T, which means there's no intercept. Okay, there or there's no slope, no no intercept. This, this is not beta zero i t. If, if this was beta, beta zero i t, it means that there would be a different intercept for firm, the different firms, and a different intercept for the year. Okay, but since these parameters are betas, do not have any i nor t, it means walang ano walang separate na uh, individual. Uh, 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 measures no, for the different terms. Okay, so uh, we're going to use the PLM, the panel linear model. Okay, this is a powerful uh, package that's used for panel data regression. So you know this very well. Let's call it model OLS, the formula, or you can just remove the formula, is equal to L scrap regressed on total Rs, D88, D89, the grant, and the grant of last year and data is equal to JT, but we have to add here the index. The index, this is your cross-sectional unit, the F code, comma, and the year is your uh, time index. Okay, so be sure to include this. And then model is equal to pooling. So this means that this is just an ordinary least squares method. Okay, so let's run this. And we have here our model there okay intercept uh unfortunately it's the only one significant okay but if assuming this was significant then what does this mean take note that uh, that the uh, dependent variable log scrap scrap is in log so that when we interpret this this should be for every one r increase in total r sub training there's a corresponding 0.46 percent okay decrease in the scrap rate cateris paribus uh, if you recall guys uh, from if your dependent variable is log then when you interpret it you should move two decimal places to the right and then put a percentage there and then uh, that's how you interpret it 0.46 yeah i have to move two decimal places 0.46 and then a fix of percent 0.46 percent decrease because this is negative in scrap in scrap rate okay because our dependent variable is log scrap okay but since this is not significant then uh, uh, that this means that uh, this is not significantly different from zero but assuming this was significant then that's how we will interpret that and then if you recall guys for this one since they are dummy variables this should be interpreted in line or in relation to year 1987 so on the average the scrap rate in year 1988 was lower by uh, around 26.8 percent compared to their 1987 the night compared to 1987. Ganun guys a few uh, 1989 scrap rate was lower by 51.2 percent relative to 1987. Okay. 
Okay, so ito naman, okay, this means guys that, what does this mean? Grant, uh, these are grant at year one, grant now. So these have been companies uh, that uh, received grant at this year. Uh, on the average, had increases in their log scrap. Okay, 38% nag increase. So apparently, para hindi naka hindi effective yung yung grant na binibigay dun sa sa company. Kasi positive to. And our dependent variable is the scrap rate. No? Okay, so that's your pulled OLS. No? And you have your R squared at a very low 2.7%. 2.7%. Okay, so only one is significant. So that's our pooled OLS. Now, another type, guys, of uh, related to pooled OLS is between estimator. So, only in between estimator, the between estimator exploits the cross sectional dimension, the differences between units of the data by regressing the individual average of, of Y, yung L log scrub natin on the individual averages of X and a constant using OLS. So what does this mean? Ibig sabihin to, ang ginagawa niyan, per firm, kukunin yung, ano, yung average nila. No? Okay? Tapos, yun ang ire-regress. Averages, averages ng bawat firm, and then averages ng bawat X, lahat ng independent variables, i-average yun. So yun ang gagamitin dun sa, sa regression. Okay? So what happens here is that all variables are replaced with its mean per cross-sectional unit. So log, log scrap will be replaced by the mean of the log scrap of each of the cross-sectional units. So ibig sabihin yan, guys. So let me, let's just show that. Okay. So this is firm one, di ba? Ito yung firm one. So ang gagamitin dito, kukunin yung average nito. Okay. Average itong total R. Okay, so mawawala na to kasi uh, uh, this will not matter, no? So average lang, guys. No? Average lang ng mga variables natin. Okay, so when we run this, ito yung ano, no? Ito yung, let's call it model between. So how do you do it? I-update lang natin. Di ba may model OLS na tayo? We have this OLS model. So we can just up, update this. Ibig sabihin, we're still going to use itong model OLS na to. Papalitan lang natin yung model is equal to between. Hindi na model is equal to pooling. So everything the same, guys. Everything the same. Okay, in-update lang natin si model OLS. And then we just replace the model called pooling with model between. Okay, so let's run this. Okay. All right, so ito na guys yung result natin, no? Okay, ito yung result natin yung between. So again guys, anong ano di ba ang pinaka-concept nito? Pinapalitan yung ano yung individual na ano, individual na XIT natin, individual na log scrap per per firm ng averages nila. Okay? Ng averages nila. So uh, again, also the uh, the parameters are not are not constant, no? So medyo iba siya dun sa, okay, ito yung pulled, negative 0 0.004, negative 0 0.007 to. No? However, bo both of them are not are not significant. Okay? But that's how the between the between estimator works. Tapos yung isa pa guys, yung, yung first differences. Ba? If you recall guys, yung first differences, let me flash that again. So first differences, ang ginagawa natin yan, uh, 2020 minus 2019, 2021 minus 2020, okay? So magiging parang dalawa na lang yung ano, yung yung element ng ano, ng uh, ng pinari ito, no? <clears throat> so this is, uh, sorry, uh, 11 minus, 10 minus 9 and 11 minus 10, okay? And you do that for all the variables. Pinari, log scrap, kunyari ito, yun ang magiging log, log, log scrap na. You do, the, you, do this, you do the same for all the variables. Okay. Then, so how do we do, take the first differences? 
Mag-create na naman tayo ng function. Let's create this object, diff, which is a function of x. Okay? x minus, using diff plier, okay, we get the log of x. Pag sinabing log of x, guys, kukunin yung value ng uh, log, uh, log, ibig sabihin, one period before. Okay? And then what do we do with this? We first group by f code. And then mutate. If we should mutate, we go compute tayo. We mutate. Uh, we'll we'll have this uh, we'll have this uh, object difference and log scrap is equal to difference log scrap difference total hours and the difference of the grant. And then yeah, and group natin sila. Okay. So if you run this. Okay, so na yung and then, so na create pa lang tayo ng difference ano so ngayon okay so ngayon magregress na tayo ano so we will now ito na yung model natin na first differences we will regress yung difference ng log scrap on the difference ng total hours plus the difference of the grant <clears throat> okay hindi natin ginagamit yung grant minus one kasi pareho lang ng grant yun ano and then uh, using the same data. So this is now your first difference. Okay, so this is your first difference. Iba na yung ano nila, no? Iba na yung variables natin. No? Kasi yung, yung log scrap natin, naging difference na ng log scrap. Yung total hours natin, naging difference na ng total hours. Okay, so when you interpret this, you interpret it in the light of the difference, no? Difference data. Okay, so mas mahirap i-interpret talaga yung ano. Mas mahirap i-interpret yung, yung difference. Okay, ang R squared niya is uh, 0 0.01, 0 0.02. Okay, so these are the three ways to, to conduct your pool. But usually ang ginagamit talaga yung pool. You have pooled and then you have the between and then you have the first difference. Okay, so uh, interpreting the results, assuming the difference total R is significant for every one R increase in the difference total R stone, sorry. Difference total R of training from one period to the next, there is a corresponding 0.3% decrease in the difference in the difference log scrap rate for the firm Keteris paribus okay so just be careful in in interpreting lalong pag mga first differences ang ini-interpret natin diyan hindi yung log scrap yung difference na log scrap ang ini-interpret natin hindi yung total hours yung difference sa total hours but then again guys i said that uh, what's usually done is yung pool no kasi yung between at saka yung first differences Okay, next. Some fixed effects. No? Ano naman tong fixed effects? So very important to. Uh, by the way, it can be called covariance model within estimator, individual dummy variable model, least squares dummy variable model. Okay, the, the fixed effect model takes into account individual heterogeneity. No? Na ibig sabihin, may pagkakaiba si firm 1 kay firm 2 kay firm 3. Kaya ang ginagawa natin, Nag pwede tayong mag-introduce ng intercept o ng slope na kakaiba sa kanila. No? Translated into different intercepts or slopes can be of the regression line for different individuals. The model in this case assigned the subscript I to the constant term. I said corrected intercepts lang, no? not the slope as shown below. So ito yung equation natin. Y I sub T is equal to beta 1 sub I. Tinan nyo to, guys. So you now have a constant beta 1, that has an I subscript. Ibig sabihin ito, si beta 1, pwedeng beta 1, 1. Ibig sabihin, beta 1 ng firm 1, beta 1 ng firm 2, beta 1 ng firm 3, etc. So, pwedeng iba-iba. Ito yung ano, ba? Ito yung intercept. No? Pwedeng iba-iba yung intercept per firm. Okay? So, ang tawag dyan, yan ng fixed effects. No? So, there's a corresponding fixed effect 
uh, that can be uh, that can be generated uh, for the individual differences. Kasi iba si firm 1, iba si firm 2. So pwede natin i-account yung, yung heterogeneity nila. Okay? Okay. Use fixed effect whenever you are only interested in analyzing the impact of variables that vary over time. Okay? So yung mga variables na hindi nagbabary over time, hindi natin sinasama sa fixed effect yun. Kasi hindi uh, naman magbabago yun, di ba? Kunyari, gender. If you have a variable na gender doon, or race. Unless siguro nagbago siya ng race. <clears throat> now, these are variables that do not vary over time. So they're not really included in your fixed effects model. <clears throat> Example, yung country, country niya, yung person, yung company. These are individual characteristics that may or may not influence the predictor variables. Okay. Oh, wait, huh? Okay, I stand corrected, no? Yung FE, fixed effects, it explores the relationship between the predictor okay, and the outcome variables within an entity. Kunyari, country. Kunyari, you're taking a look at the ASEAN. So, pwedeng yung B1I na yan, pwedeng iba yung, yung intercept ni Thailand, ni Malaysia, ni Philippines. But the rest are the same. No? Yung mga beta 2, ah, hindi. But itong beta 2I, beta 3I, pwede rin, no? Pwede rin magkakaiba yung, yung slope nila. Okay? Because that accounts sa differences in the, in the country, in the individual units. Each entity has its own variables. For example, being male or female that could influence the opinion towards a certain issue. Okay, so... <clears throat> Some more, some more notes here. When using fixed effect, we assume that something within the individual may impact or bias the predictor or outcome variables. Okay? So, kindly read on uh, uh, this one. Okay? So, tuloy natin to. Okay. So, ang pinaka ano talaga, yung method of fixed effect is what we call fixed effect within estimator. Fixed effect for short or fixed effect within estimator. So we can run this model fixed effects. Pwede natin i-update lang si model OLS and then redefine lang natin yung model is equal to VDIN. Pero kailangan ilalagay natin to effect is equal to individual. Okay? Or the long formula is ganun din PLM formula is equal to log scrap regress on total Rs D88, D89 grant, grant, log Lag of grant data is equal to, oops, malito. Sorry, this should be JT. JT. <clears throat> index is equal to, isasama ulit mo, index. And then model is equal to within. No? Yung pull the OLS kanina, uh, pulling yung model. Yung between kanina, uh, between. <clears throat> uh, yung first differences, hindi natin dinagay dito kasi iba yung variables, no? And then you have to include your effect is equal to individual. Okay, so let's run this. Uh, if you run the uh, the one above, ito, pareho lang na makukuha natin. Okay, let's take a look at the result of the fixed effect. <clears throat> okay, so here guys, makikita natin na walang ano, no? walang, uh, yung grant one lang significant at 10%. Okay, it's also only significant at 10%. Okay. Uh, in, how do you interpret this? Assuming na naman na your total Rs is significant. So, linagay ko ni dito. Ito yun, no? If this is significant, it means that for every one R increase, uh, increase of total Rs of training, kasi total Rs and total, total Rs and training per cross-sectional unit, no? So, ito guys, ang interpretation ito, per unit. Okay, uh, one R increase in total hours of training per, per firm over its mean. Okay, over its mean, the scrap rates go down by 0.47% for that term. Okay, so you interpret this on a per firm basis. Although pareho lang yung the number, no? 0.47. But this is uh, country country-wise no? or unit-wise. 
Okay. Now, notice the adjusted R squared niya, 0 0.22, 22%, 23%. Mas mataas siya dun sa fold, no? Ibig sabihin, mas maraming variation ang na-explain ng fixed effect relative to your fold OLS. Okay. Now, we can summarize, guys, the individual specific effects. So let's create an object called ISE, Individual Specific Effects. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Tingnan natin, kasi bawat country, di ba sabi natin, bawat country may kanya-kanyang individual specific effects. No? So ito, ISE, Fixed Effects, papakumpin na natin Fixed Effects, Model FE, Type is equal to D-Mean. Okay? The mean. The mean, ang ibig sabihin yan. Okay, so I'll explain that in a while. So, iran natin to. Okay, so ito yung head, no? Yung first term. 410523. Ano ibig sabihin ito? Negative 3.27. And then, 41538. Ito yung mga firms. Then, ito yung mga ano nila. Ito yung mga... And, ritan nga natin to. Para ano. 6 lang tapos i-round natin. Para mas makita natin. 3 decimal places lang. Okay. Oops, sorry. Ayaw niya. Ah, ayaw daw niya. Round. Oh, hindi ata pwede. Okay. Sige, sige. Let me, let me remove that. Sorry, I. Uh, round. Okay, and uh, never mind. Uh, ayoko na ano, ayoko na alamin kung uh, okay. So again, ano ibig sabihin ito? Ito na guys yung mga individual specific effects, no? So this is for the first 10 terms. Each firm has their own individual specific effects that does not vary over time. For the whole year 1987, for three years, 87, 88, 89, ito yung individual uh, specific effect kay, ano, kay firm 4, 10, 5, 2, 3. Negative 3.27. Ibig sabihin, this is included in the, ano, uh, this is the reduction in the log scrap rate. Of, uh, of this firm, 410523. Okay, si 410538, nag-i-increase pa nga yung scrap rate niya. So si 410563, nag-i-increase din ng 1.29 yung scrap rate niya. No? Nag-i-increase uh, across all years. Okay, so we, we can see here the individual specific uh, specific effects of the first 10 firms. Each, each firm has their own specific effects that does not vary over time okay so it's something specific to the firm that makes the scrap rates higher or lower so yung ibang firms bumababa yung scrap rate which is good kasi ang pinag-uusapan natin dito yung yung scrap di ba okay for example si company 410523 as i said here has a scrap rate that is 3.28 uh this should be uh dapat kasi log scrap tayo no Dapat ano to, times, no? 3.28 times lower than the average scrap rate. Ganun din si firm 4153. 0.45 times higher than the average rates across all, all firms. Okay? So we don't know, guys, kung ano. We don't know what's in the company uh, that makes the uh, their scrap rates lower or higher by, by that much. No? But we know there's something in that company that makes the uh, the scrap rates lower. Uh, bakit si, ano, si, si firm 410.523, bakit mas mababa yung scrap rate niya? No? So there's something in that company that makes makes it, that makes the scrap lower. Okay? So in fact, if we, we can summarize this, no? Ito yun. Ito lahat ng firms, 54 lahat yan. <clears throat> okay? 54 firms lahat yan. Tapos ito yung mga individual special effects nila. Yung kay 4, kay 4, 10, 5, 3, it's, it's uh, significant at 0.001. And there's an decrease. No? Uh, 
yung average crack rate niya mas mababa kaysa all the other firms, no? I think siya nga yung pinakamalaking ano, no? Ang pinakamalaking ano naman increase itong 2.70. Itong si firm 419272, siya yung mas may malaking ano, malaking uh, scrap scrap rate across all firms. So we can see here the the individual specific effects and if we we can we can uh, okay itong is individual specific effects kinuha lang naman yung lahat no lahat ng average nila lahat ng standard deviation standard deviation minimum ng everything and maximum of everything yung 2.7 kung ano try 3.5 ay tabo natin 3.5 sino yung 3.5 meron pa pala mas mababa ito no Si firm number 410665, no? Mas mababa yung ano niya, yung scrap rate niya relative to the other other firms. Okay. Now, sa fixed effect, pwede namang ano, pwede din namang uh, a similar method is the least squares dummy variables. Ito ang ginagawa dito, guys, dun sa model mismo. Uh, parang sinama na natin dito, parang yung ginawa natin dito sa ano, sa summary Sinasama na niya sa model yan. Ito. So let's do this. So model, dummy variable. I-update lang natin si OLS. Tapos, ilalagay lang natin yung factor na na year. Parang OLS lang to, pero isasama natin yung ano yung mga firms. No? As dummy variables. So if we run this. Okay. So take a look at this. It's just like an, an OLS. No? Parang pulled lang siya. Parang pulled lang. Sinama nga lang yung yung differences, no? Yung individual specific effects. Sinama lang siya. Okay? And then surprisingly guys, kung tinan natin yung ano, kung tinan natin yung R squared ni ano ni R squared ni fixed effect so yung within ang R squared niya is where's that? Ito. R squared ni fixed effect is 22.8 percent. R squared naman ni ano ni LSDB least squares dummy variable. Yung sinasama lahat ng ano sa sa OLS natin lahat ng mga firms sinasama. The R squared is 92%. So teka muna, akala ko pareho lang siya, di ba? Kasi yung uh, yung fixed effect within actually it takes into consideration yung mga ano, yung mga individual specific effects sa mga cross sectional units, di ba? Although hindi nga lang siya naka ano, hindi nga lang siya naka spell out, no? Pero di ba sa fixed effects, makukuha naman natin yan by by getting the fixed effect function. Pero dito na sinama na natin diretso sa kasi pareho lang yung ano no yung mga estimate niya point uh, okay ito wala intercept no pero yung mga ano yung mga variables yung mga predictors total hours 0.0047 0.0047 uh, d88.0747 yan pareho lang no pareho lang guys yung mga ano yung mga predictors natin same same coefficients Okay. Same P, same probabilities, same P values. Dito sa LSDD, sinama lang yung ano, sinama lang yung yung mga individual firms. Pero bakit ano? Bakit ang layo ng ano ng R squared ng LSDD, yung least squares dummy variable as compared to yung fixed effect within? Eh actually technically pareho lang siya, no? Okay. So let's explain that, no? Okay, as I said here, if the FE within estimator is similar to LSDB, then why are there R squared different? The point 22% vis a vis 92%. No? So, ito sinamarize ng ulit yung FE, ito lang yun din. No? Okay, 22.87%. Samantalang si ano, si, si ano 92%. Okay, so let's quickly, uh, quickly explain lang kung bakit siya ganun. Okay, so ito yung dummy variable, di ba? 
kasing dami variable kanina. Tapos yung ano niya, yung... Okay. Uh, dito na tayo. No? So what we're going to do is, if you recall in your in your stat dati, may minimeasure kayo ng sum of the squares of your uh, regression, sum of the squares of your error terms. Di ba pag nag-regression model tayo, kinocompute natin yung yung variation na na-explain ng regression model natin. Di ba? So, yun ang tawag natin doon, sum of the squares of the regression. Tapos, minimeasure din natin yung yung hindi kayang i-explain, yung un unexplained variance yung sum of the squares of your error terms. Dito, gagamitin natin, gagamitin natin dito yun. No? So first here, let's create an object called y hat and kukunin natin predicted values ni ng Fe natin, fixed effects natin. Uh, Di ba guys? Dali ah, just to show you. Names model Fe. Okay, si model Fe, list yan eh. Di ba? May mga laman yan. Ito yung coefficients niya. Okay. Uh, B variance, covariance, residuals. Okay. Model F is an end. Okay. As in, ano? May kasama din fitted values dito eh. Okay, but hindi nakalagay dito. But we can get the fitted values. Guys. And the, sorry, function pala to, no? So let's create an object called y hat where we're getting the fitted or predicted values of your model FE. So i natin to. Okay. Tapos ang gagawin natin dito, i-determine natin si y. Ano ibig sabihin i-determine si y? Si y babawasan natin ng ng average na. No? Remember dun sa ano natin kanina, may dinimin natin, di ba? D mean Hours that. Ito to. Yan o. Nung kinumpute natin fixed effects, type is equal to the mean. Ibig sabihin nun, uh, in computing for the fixed effect, uh, uh, mina minus sa y, mina minus sa log scrap, yung, yung average niya. Okay. So mina minus yung average, yung mean. Okay. So ito na yung, ito na yung y, ito na yung log scrap na the mean. So let's run this. Okay, tapos, uh, kukunin natin yung sum of the squares of your regression. This is your sum of squares of regression. Okay. So ibig sabihin, ito yung, ito yung na-explain niya, no? Yung predicted minus yung mean niya. Okay, so let's run this also. Control enter. Tapos ito naman yung unexplained. Yung SSE. Which is the sum of the yung residual. Residual na model natin. And then squared. Okay, so I just showed you a, uh, a way to compute. Yung ano, no? So makukomputan natin yung R squared. Which is equal to SSR. This is this, the uh, total explained variance. Uh, explained variance divided by the total variance. Explained and unexplained. Okay, I don't know if you recall this. Uh, ano nyo? Okay. So ito yung guys. Huh? 22.87. Yeah, approximately. So ito yung, ano, ito yung explained variance ni, ano, ni, ni, eh, ilan nga natin lahat sabay sabay. Okay. <clears throat> ito guys yung explained variance. Okay, ito yung unexplained variance. So 7.2 divided by quantity 7.2 plus 24, you'll get 22.87%. Okay, bakit ang konti lang ng ano, ng maliit lang yung ano, yung explained variance ni fixed effect? Let's, co let's uh, compare that with ano, let's compare that with yung LSDV. So pareho lang guys, pareho lang yung pag-compute. Okay, so let me show that Okay, tingnan nyo guys to. This is the sum of the squares of your residuals for the LSDV, the squares dummy variable. Ibig sabihin, malaki yung variation na na-explain nitong LSDV compared to okay, fixed effects. Fixed fix effect within. Okay. 
that's why mas pagiging mataas talaga yung ano yung r squared ni ano ni LSDV. So ito guys, no? If we compare their SSEs and their SSRs, they differ in the explained variance ng SSR but have the same unexplained variance SSE. Pareho lang yung hindi nila kaya explain. How can this be when they have the same values for the coefficients, no? And the same individual effects. Paano yun? Di ba pareho lang naman yung parameters sila? Sa pareho lang naman yung individual effects? Okay, the reason behind this is how FE, FE fixed effect within is computed. Di ba? Uh, sa FE, binidimin natin yung variable. Binabawas yung average nila. So unlike yung LSDB na yung actual variable ang ginagamit, sa FE ang ginagamit yung the mean. The mean, ibig sabihin, may minus dun sa value ng mga variables yung average nila. So instead of using y, it uses y minus y bar. Okay? This basically removes a lot of variation from there. So because dinimin siya, mas lumiit yung variation ngayon ng dependent variable natin. Okay? Thus, for LSDB, yung sum of the squares of the regression niya, mataas. Para kay FE within naman, mababa lang. Kasi mababa na yung, ano, yung, yung uh, variation dun sa FE model, FE within. Kasi nga, dinimin na tinanggal na yung, ano, eh. tinanggal na yung uh, minus yung average. Hence, we can't explain a lot of the variance using FE within estimator. This is one of the properties, sorry, mali, properties of FE within compared to L LSDB estimator. So don't be don't be surprised, no? Kung makita niyo na ah, mas mataas yung adjusted R squared. Okay? Kasi nga magkaiba yung way ng pagcompute ng adjusted R, ng R squared. No? Okay, it doesn't mean that, that the LSDB is better. Iba lang yung pagcompute nila ng ng ano ng ng R squared. Okay. Lastly, guys, last na to, no? Random effects estimator. Okay, ano naman yung difference sa random effects estimator? Okay, ang pinaka-concept nito So, since uh, 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 related ang random effects sa fixed effects, no? it elaborates on the fixed effect model by recognizing that since the individuals in the panel are randomly selected, their characteristics measured by the intercept, yung beta 1i natin, should also be random. Okay, so ang sinasabi sa fixed effect, yung beta 1 natin i is fixed, no? fixed per, per, uh, per cross-sectional unit. Sa random effects naman, itong beta 1 sub i na to, hindi fix yan. Random dapat yan. Okay, kasi random random natin hina, kinuha yung data natin. Eh. Okay, kaya, di ba, B1 sub I, ito yung ginagamit natin sa fix, fix effects. No? Sa random, hindi yan. Magkakaroon tayo ng B average 1 for all to, for all the firms. Iisa lang to. No? Parang isang, isang intercept para sa lahat. Tapos magkakaroon tayo ng random term. No? random term per firm, U sub I. So yun ang difference guys ng fixed effect at saka yung random effects. Sa random, sa fixed effects ito, kada isang unit guys, meron siyang, <clears throat> meron siyang kanya-kanyang uh, intercept. No? B1, B11, yun ang intercept for unit 1, B12, intercept for unit 2, etc. Sa ano naman, merong fixed component Uh, for all, no? Average ng B1. Tinan yung B1 ito yung naka-average, no? And then you have this random component. Okay? <clears throat> yun ang difference siya. Kaya nga ang tawag sa kanya, random effects. Okay? And then, let's see this. Kaya nga, ang mangyayari guys sa random effects will be uh, Y sub IT plus, ito yun yung magiging ano natin, intercept, no? Plus, ito yung, ano, yung mga predictors natin plus new IT. No? Ano yung new IT? So, ang new IT will be, okay, it will be the random component plus your error term. Okay, yung mga random component na hindi natin makapture, sinasama siya sa error term. Okay, so yun ang, yun ang difference. Yun ang main difference, guys, ng fixed effect at saka ng random effects. Okay? So, kailangan natin mag-test, guys, kung itong random effects na yan, yung U sub I na yan, okay, kung kung wala naman yan. Kasi kung wala yan, kung wala naman differences dun sa mga individuals, then uh, baka fixed effect siya. 
Okay? So, kung wala naman yung use of I9, yung random effect na yan, uh, it implies that the individual specific random variables has zero variance. Kasi kung zero variance, either uh, fixed effect siya or pool. Okay, so i-run na natin guys. So one way is to update lang natin si OLS. Tapos isasawa lang dito, model, random, and then random that method wall has. I'll not discuss anymore kung kasi iba-ibang methods. No? Ito yung isa sa most commonly ginagamit. Okay, or you can use here the, you know, the, uh, the long cut. No? Then regress natin si L-scrap on these variables. And then data natin is JT. And then index ko sa malagi. Model is equal to random. And in method, walas natin. Okay, let's run this. Okay. All right, so what do we have now? Okay, so total R's natin significant at the 10% level. R squared natin is 16%. Okay, so again, if we interpret this, interpretation natin, total R's is significant at 10% level for every one R increase for every. For every one R increase in total training R's, the scrap rate decreases by 0.47% Keteris paribus. Okay? Now, uh, is this a result dito sa, ano, sa random effects? Is this one? Okay. Kina niya to, may theta. No? Ano tong theta? Ano yung theta? Now, this is also critical. No? This is very important. Tapos dito may idiosyncratic at saka may individual. O may atitinan natin yan. No? Okay. Ano yung theta, uh, theta nito? Okay, uh, linagay ko ni notes dito guys for your reference. Uh, this measure tells us how close the random effects model is. How close uh, mali ito is how close the RE model is to either okay, pooled or RF model. Di ba kasi guys kung yung variance ng use of I natin, yung mention natin kanina, is zero then it can either either be fixed effects or pulled effects no? or pulled OLS. So ang tanong dito, ano siya? Okay, tinin natin yung median dito, no? 0.7938. The median 0.7938 indicates that this is closer to the fixed effects model. No? Mas close to sa fixed effect model. Okay. So pag mas malapit sa 1, itong median na to, Ibig sabihin, it's closer to the fixed effects model. Pag mas malapit siya sa zero, ibig sabihin, it's closer to the uh, pulled OLS. Uh, actually, pwede natin makompute yung theta, no? Okay, but I will not anymore, uh, I will not anymore explain to you. Uh, pareho lang siya kanina yung sa pag-compute ng, ano, ng, ng sigma squared, ng SSE or SSR. Okay, so let me uh, run this. Okay. Pinapakita ko lang kung paano ko i-compute. Although hindi na naman natin kailangan i-compute kasi andi dito naman siya. Eh. Ayan o. Oh. It's here, di ba? Ayan. Idiosyncratic. Idiosyncratic, ito 2553. And then individual, 1.917. And then uh, ito yung idiosyncratic na 0.7938. Uh, ang minimeasure dito yung first quartile. Hindi yung median. And I'm sorry, yung median pala. Okay. So, ang ibig sabihin na idiosyncratic dito. Ang ibig sabihin na idiosyncratic dito, no? Uh, I'm sorry, ha? Tama. Refers to the variance of the error terms. So, ito yun, no? Ito yung variance ng error times. This is the SSE. Tapos yung individual naman effects refers to the variance of the individual special effect. So, 79.38. Okay, since the variance of the ID is greater than the idiosyncratic, so kung i-compare natin, ano, yung variance ni ni asa na si, ano, si Okay. So si theta, okay, 0.79 siya. 
tapos si uh, okay since the variance of the individual effects is greater than the uh, idiosyncratic effects we conclude the re is far more similar to fe than the re than the re is similar to the pooled ols no? so the variance of the i of the individual id ito no? is greater than the idiosyncratic ito so we conclude that the re is more similar to fe than the re is similar to the pooled ols okay all right so lastly guys it's the name last testing which of the methods is best okay kasi tat, uh, tatlong methods yung ina natin yung pooled yung fixed effect at saka random effects okay so first compare natin si pooled versus fixed effect within okay we're going to use the f test ito ang null hypothesis natin there are no significant fixed effects in other words yung beta 1 i natin beta 1 a natin is is zero statistically it's not no different from zero so ibig sabihin yung pooled ols is better okay pooled ols is better okay so we're going to use the uh the uh pf test no? so let's run this okay kailangan natin i-print So this is the F test. Okay, the P value is uh, less than 0 0.05. The null hypothesis is there are no significant effects. The alternative hypothesis is there are significant effects. So our conclusion, we reject the null hypothesis that there are no significant effects. May, may individual significant effects. Therefore, we, we choose the fixed effects model over the pool OLS. Okay, so actually, pwede natin i-print to parang yung kanina yung sa cable. Hmm. Anong nangyari dito? I could not find the... Okay, sandali ah. I think... Where's our cable kanina? Need our uh, okay, I'm going to check this. Let me check. No? Let me check. I'm going to check the table. Table. X table ng PF test. Okay, let, let, let me see if this will work. I hope it works. Okay, sorry, it doesn't work, no? I just have to decipher. Anyway, guys, ang pinapakita nito yung ano, yung para in tabular form. No? Okay, let, let me just print this. Okay, so ito yung ano natin, no? Yung F test for individual effects. And we found out that the fixed effect model is better. Okay, how about the you know, comparison between pooled OLS versus RE? Ang null hypothesis natin dito, yung variance ng, yung U sub I natin is equal to zero. So, ibig sabihin, bali wala yun, no? Wala yung, ano, yung, yung U sub I natin kanina, yung variance ng, ano, ng, ng specific individual units, no? So, we, you make use of the Bruce Pagan test, PLM nun, no? So, this one. Okay, and then let's uh, run. 
Okay, I'm sorry about the cable, hindi na naman siya nag-run. Okay, ito na lang tingnan natin, no? So the null hypothesis is yung yung individual uh, yung variance niyan yung u sub i na yan it's zero wala siyang wala siyang uh, random wala siyang random effects no? okay and then here makikita natin that the alternative hypothesis is that there there are significant effects no? and then the p value is less than 0 0.05 so we reject the null hypothesis that there are no significant effects merong random effects so the choice is random effects over a uh, pulled OLS. And lastly, guys, we're going to compare kasi mas ma okay si fixed effect kaysa pulled, mas okay si random effect kaysa pulled. So i-compare naman natin si random at saka si fixed effect. We're going to make use of the Hausman test. No? The Hausman test is used whether to use fixed effect or random effects. The null hypothesis is fixed effect coefficient are not significantly different from the random effects. So hindi naman sila nagkakaiba, no? No? Kung kung ano, kung if the fixed effect coefficient are not significantly different from the random effects. Ba? So uh pipiliin natin si ano, si random effects, no? Okay, so let's run this. Ito yung test natin. We're going to use the pH test Hausman test, no? So we're going to compare yung Okay, uh, i-compare natin si model FE at si, si, si model RE. Okay. Hindi na naman nag si cable. Okay. All right. So we have this. This is our uh, p-value is 0.9425. Okay. So what does this mean? We fail to reject the null hypothesis that the random effects is better. If it's been on fixed effect coefficient are not significantly different from the RE coefficient. So when these are significantly different, then we use the RE. Okay. One model is inconsistent, an um, alternative hypothesis. So dito, the null hypothesis is aka to para hindi kay malito, random effects is better compared to. All right. So it turns out, guys, that for this model, we will have to use the uh, random effects. No? Random effects are model na gagamitin natin, natin dito by virtue of the test uh, that we conducted, yung Hausman test. Okay, so that ends our discussion on panel data regression. Uh, I hope you learned something. Thank you.